Erev Tov Rabotai, we are continuing with our Mishnah Yomi, Masechet Yoma, we are up to Perek Vav, Mishnah Hey. Today's Mishnah Yot should be Leirun Nishmat, Neria Ben Svetlana, Aran Baev, and Eliyahu Ben Burcha Yisraelov, Minuchatam Began Eden, Amen. The Mishnah begins on Kol Suka Visuka, Omrim Lo, at each and every hut, the person waiting there would say to him, Are Mazon Vare Maim, here is food and here is water, so that he would be reassured that food and drink were available if he needed them. Now, even though he was fasting, the knowledge that food and water were available eased his hunger and gave him the strength to continue his journey. As the Rav explains, They only said this to calm him down. Someone who has bread in his basket is not hungry like one who does not have bread in his basket. Now, in actuality, the Rav says it never happened that the one taking the Azazen goat needed to eat or drink. Now, had he felt unable to complete his task unless he ate or drink, he would have been allowed to do so, the Tverd Yisrael explains, because the mitzvah to bring the goat to the cliff overrides the obligation to fast on Yom Kippur. Um misuka lisuka, they would accompany him from one hut to the next hut, except for the person in the last hut who did not go all the way to the cliff with them because the cliff was farther than he was permitted to walk. On Shabbat and Yom Tov, it is forbidden to walk more than one mil, two thousand amot from the place where one was residing when the day began. This distance is known as the Tchum Shabbat, the Shabbat boundary. Each of the people waiting in the huts had been there since before Yom Kippur. Therefore, he could walk one mil from his hut, which was just enough to reach the next hut. As Rashi explains on page 67a in Mesechet Yoma. The person in the last hut, which was located two mil from the cliff, was allowed to walk with them only half of the way. The person who took the Azazel goat was allowed to travel outside his tchum because the mitzvah bringing the goat to the cliff overrides the prohibition of going outside one's tchum on Shabbat boundary. Instead, he stood at a distance and watched what he did. They did not build an 11th hut at a distance of one mil from the cliff because its resident would be able to reach the cliff on Yom Kippur and that would not be consistent with the Torah's description in Seva Vaikra chapter 16, Pasuk 22 of the area as uninhabited land. The Torah refers to it as uninhabited land. Therefore, they made a separation from the person to the area two mil and he would walk with him one mil. The other one would be uninhabited. He would walk himself. That is in Rabotei Mishnah. Hey, Mishnah Vav continues, Me'ayahoseh, what did he do when he reached the cliff? Cholek Lashon Shel Zeorit. He divided the red string that was tied to the goat. The Kohen Gadot had tied a red string to the horns of the Azazel goat after he drew lots, like we learned in chapter 4, Mishnah 2. So he divided the string. Chetzio Kashar Basela Chetzio Kashar Ben Shtekarnav. He tied one half of the string to a rock above the cliff and he tied the other half between its two horns. Now, when the sins of the Jewish people were forgiven, the red string miraculously turned white. The person did not tie the whole string to the rock because it might turn white as soon as he finishes tying it, which would delight him so much that he might overlook the need to push the goat over the cliffs, thinking it's unnecessary since forgiveness had already been granted. Nor did he tie the entire string to the goat because the goat's head might be hidden by its body as it fell, making it impossible for him to see whether the string had turned white. Instead, he tied half the string to a rock and half to the goat's horns. In this way, he would not forget to push the goat off the cliff because the string never turned white until his tying had been completed, and at that moment he would still be handling the animal. And there was no danger of him not seeing the string turn white, since he could see the half that was tied to the rock. Then he pushed it backward and it tumbled down the cliff. Now the commentators explain had he pushed it forward, it could have slowed its fall by uh, digging its feet into the ground. So he pushes it backwards. It did not reach halfway down the mountain before it was so battered by the rocks that its limbs separated from one another. Then, having completed his mission, he would go back and sit under the shade of the last hut until darkness fell and Yom Kippur was over. Ordinarily, someone who walks beyond this Tchum Shabbat or Yom Tov, even if he is permitted to do so, may not go more than 2,000 amot, one mil from his destination. The sages, however, allowed this man to walk the 4,000 amot, two mil back to the last hut because he would be afraid to be alone in the wilderness once it became dark. Now the Torah states in Seva Vaikra, chapter 16, Pasuk 26, that the man who escorts the Azazel in his clothing become Tameh. The Mishnah cites a dispute about when this occurs. 
When does escorting the Azazel make his clothing tame? Meaning, when do he and his clothing become impure? Tame. The Tanakhama says when he goes outside the wall of Yerushalayim. Rabbi Shimon, Omer, Rabbi Shimon says, When the goat is pushed over the cliff. And the Rav does tell us, Rabbi Shimon, the Alakha does not follow the opinion of Rabbi Shimon. Rather, when the Torah says, Vamshalech et asir lazazel yichabes begadav, the one who throws the seir off Azazel should launder his clothing because he's impure. That applies right away when he goes outside the wall of Yerushalayim. That is in Rabotai of today's Mishnah Yumi. Baruch Adonai Leolam. Amen v'amen.